balance sheet roll-offs, they're coming to an end. Rate hikes, they've come to an end. Next stop, lower rates and quantitative easing. If you have, ask yourself, if you have an interest-bearing account and they land up lowering rates or even going negative, you're going to be even more robbed than you already have been. They're forcing America at this point, and they've been doing this, they're forcing the middle class, the people who are working, who are just trying to make a living, paying their bills, um, don't want to live in debt, trying to you know, li live their lives uh, the most intelligent way possible and live the American dream. The middle class is being gutted. They're forcing the middle class to gamble in these markets. You can't earn money in your bank accounts. You're not going to earn money in bonds. Any interest-bearing account, you're not going to be earning anything because they're going to be lowering rates lower than they already are now and possibly even going negative. So they are forcing middle class America to gamble in these markets. And this is just an, a tragedy. And I believe it's going to end very bad for millions and millions of people. So while we're being told that the economy is booming, that the stock market's booming, we have Larry Kudlow coming out in saying that the Federal Reserve should lower interest rates by 50 basis points. Now, why is he saying that if we're being told things are great? Dow Jones on Friday was up 211 points. This almost seems hypocritical uh, that we, we're seeing the Dow Jones now approaching record highs. We're getting near record highs again, yet Larry Kudlow says the Fed should be lowering rates 50 basis points. The truth of the, of the matter is the budget deficit is blowing up. The tax cuts are wearing off uh, and the debt is skyrocketing. Federal spending is at the highest it has been in 10 years. Do you really, ask yourself, do you really believe this is going to end well? I can promise you it is not going to end well. Do you really believe that things are healthy, that things are heading in the, in the right positive direction. I don't believe they are. I know most of you don't believe they are. And this is why I'm so adamant that every one of you is preparing on these days that nothing's happening. Today, we haven't had any implosions, nothing majors happened. You should be preparing today. You should be preparing tomorrow. Every day is an opportunity to continue to prepare for what is coming. This is not going to go away. These deficits and these debts continue to get bigger. The risk gets more extreme, and at some point, we are going to be faced to deal with reality. They're trying to put confidence in an economy that they know that is dying. You, you have to ask yourself, how does a country survive with this much debt? Just say we're around $200 trillion of debt with unfunded liabilities, and you're adding a trillion dollars plus of debt every year. And as the debt gets bigger, the cost to service this debt gets bigger. We're not going bankrupt, folks. We are bankrupt. This country, as of right now, as I'm speaking, is bankrupt. And we have to come to the realization of that. We, we have to stop being like these people, just living in, uh, on credit cards and running up debt for things that they don't need or to impress people. These people that live like this, they're going to continue running up their credit cards. They're going to continue buying stuff right into the depression. And they're going to be in huge trouble. We have never seen a time in our history where a country has acquired this much debt, where we have people that feel so entitled, or we have people living off of plastic cards, government subsidies, credit cards. Um, you know, it's just 480 million credit cards, I believe, are floating around in the United States of America. People are get, using it for car repairs, groceries, paying their rent. I mean, we have serious, serious trouble right now in America, and we are going to witness the ramifications of living on credit. It's coming very soon. Uh, I just talked to a, a very nice gentleman, Mr. Hunter, out in Indiana, and we had a very nice talk today. And, you know, we just said, who knows what really is going to set the events off here in America? Um, it could be economic or it could be a black swan event that nobody even thought about that sets everything off. But whatever happens, whatever events transpire in America, 
it is definitely going to affect this economy and it's going to affect it in a very negative way. And, and this is why every one of you needs to be getting prepared. And you know, the number one thing you can do is educate yourself and wake up. People have got to get out of these comas. They've got to get to reality, get out of the matrix, face the facts that this country's bankrupt, face the facts that things are going to get very ugly in America. If you cannot face the music, you're not going to be able to deal with it when it gets here. And too many people now are living in these fantasy worlds, in these, in these cocoons. And just think the problems we're going to have when, you know, when people won't be able to use their cell phone, when they won't be able to text message, when they won't be able to email, when they won't be able to play a video game. Imagine the pain that these people were going to go through because this is like one of their, their biggest issues today is if their phone goes out, if their computer goes out, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to cope. Uh, and on top of that, the, the amount of people uh, that are in pharmaceuticals. But we have become a very soft people here in America. And I believe that we're going to really see a lot of casualties take place in America when things get bad because people have no abilities to cope. Uh, people are dependent on medications when they're depressed. They can't handle reality. They can't handle real life. What is going to happen if we ever hit a time like Venezuela is witnessing? How many Americans are prepared to deal with events like we're seeing in Venezuela or other parts of the world. Um, most people are not. We've become very soft and we've become very reliant on computers and cell phones and drugs. And this is the time right now to just maybe start, you know, getting away from your dependency on drugs, your dependency on cell phones, your dependency on computers. Not saying don't use them, but, you know, maybe be less dependent on them because when the day comes, those things may not be available. Are you going to be able to cope with it? And we're I want to go over a couple articles I pulled up in the last 24 hours to kind of reinforce what I'm talking about. Because I know a lot of people out there don't believe this. It's doom and gloom. It's a conspiracy theory. Now, it's all real. It's all factual. Let's go over some of the numbers. 70% of consumers with credit cards say they cannot pay those credit cards off this year. Uh, 37 million Americans right now are 90 plus days delinquent on their credit card payment. These same 37 million delinquent accounts hold $68 billion of debt. Just imagine if people could not pay back these credit cards, what would happen? Uh, it would collapse, probably collapse the banking system. Another reason why you do not want to hold too much cash in your savings or checking accounts, and another reason why you do not ever hold your precious metals, gold and silver, or precious assets in your safety deposit box at your bank. Put those in other locations that you can easily access. If you do not hold it, you do not own it. Uh, another article, JP Morgan cutting hundreds of jobs in its asset management department. Here's one on NBC. Retail apocalypse. Um, J.C. Penney's Payless, Lifeway, all announcing store closures. Uh, this article is pretty interesting because it mentioned that 41,000 people have lost their jobs in the retail sector already this year, 92% more than last year. This is telling us that we are heading in the wrong direction. And I know a lot of people out there are going to say it's all Amazon. It's the internet. That is not true. Um, you know, we had Amazon years ago. We've had the internet for many years. These stores are closing because the circulation of money is tightening up. People, you know, just don't have as much money to spend and it's going to get harder. We're going to see more store closings. We're going to see more commercial real estate available. We're going we're gonna to see things really accelerating, I believe, going into summer here um, in, 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 all the way to the end of the year. And who knows what's going to happen in 2020. But I see things just accelerating from here on out. Midwest apocalypse. Satellite data shows at least 1 million acres of U.S. farmland devastated by floods. Um, there were over a million calves lost in this flooding. They're saying more flooding is on the way. Expect beef prices to skyrocket. Um, expect 
agricultural products, fruit, vegetables also to skyrocket. And this is another reason why it's so important to have, you know, emergency food put away, uh, to have, have food and water put away because, you know, we're talking about events that can take place at any moment. And who would have thought that we would see a tragedy take place in 2019, you know, in our heartland in the Midwest with all these animals dying, fields completely flooded. Many of these farmers are not going to be able to plant crops this year. Um, so just imagine if a few things took place and we had food shortages, um, you know, you're gonna be on your own. You've got to start thinking ahead. These things, you know, people told you that these things were not possible, these things cannot happen. We're witnessing things happen right now that people said years ago could never happen. So never believe anybody that tells you that things are impossible. Learn a lesson, at least I did from 2008, that you know, too big to fail, the, the financial system, it was impossible, nothing's impossible. So now we're living in times where anything is possible. Uh, mother of all caravans is forming in Honduras. Up to 20,000 hope to cross the U.S. border. Um, this is also what we're going to be dealing with. So uh, as people are living paycheck to paycheck, as people are losing their jobs, uh, as the Midwest farmers are getting wiped out, uh, here in America, we're going to keep taking illegal aliens and we're going to keep paying for illegal aliens. So expect another large mob of illegal aliens from Honduras to invade the United States. States of America. Uh, California has been uh, has become an overcrowded nightmare article on Zero Hedge. Uh, 70 they took a survey uh, up in the Bay Area. 76% of the people that took this survey, the residents say that they are seeking to leave the Bay Area. California, 250,000 illegal kids from 3 to 17 years old are enrolled in our public schools. 750,000 from K to 12 um, are students that are from illegal aliens, that illegal aliens had here and now are in the school system that that the American citizen is paying for. So yet, we are watching uh, natural disasters take place, we're watching the middle class being wiped out, and we're on the cusp of an economic collapse, yet our politicians are allowing an invasion to take place, and we all know that this is an agenda. There was a, an article uh, that I read yesterday, Accelerating Eviction Crisis. We are witnessing a, a crisis here in America of homelessness, and we're witnessing a crisis where people are being evicted. 30% um, of people's income is going to rent. Um, and with what, what we are witnessing and experiencing in this economy, people are so strapped, and yet 30% of the money that they make is going just to pay the rent. And we are seeing record-breaking numbers of evictions taking place. And I want to close with this. Make sure, if you can, to have an emergency fund put away of three to six months. Put that money away. Take, you know, we have to make sacrifices. Don't buy stuff to keep up with the Joneses. Don't buy stuff you don't need. Don't buy stuff to impress people you know or don't know. You gotta start thinking about the future. You gotta start thinking about this tsunami that is coming. Put some money away, put some cash away, put some metals away, put some food and water away. It is time to be an independent human being. Don't be reliant on the bank. Don't be reliant on the system. Don't be reliant on the stock market. Don't be reliant on your friends. Rely on yourself. Be self-sufficient because at the end of the day, when this crash comes, none of this is going to help you but you. If you've got some money put away, you've got some assets put away, precious metals, and you've got some food and water put away and security, you are going to survive and you are going to be better off than 99% of the sheeple living in this country right now. Even the wealthy people are going to pay a severe price too. They're going to lose a lot of money. So put yourself and protect yourself. Put yourself in a good position, okay? Be that, be that 1%. Be prepared. Um, don't do what the masses are doing because they're going to lose. Do the right thing. Open your eyes and get prepared. God bless you. I'll talk to you guys very soon.